Yeah, so if you could just follow me, this is where you'll be staying. Gee whiz, this place is sweet. Thanks, man. Look, hey, anything you need at all, please. I'll be right next door. You just let me know. Thank you for your hospitality. Also, um, there is something I have to ask you. Um, you're not going to randomly just, you know, drop dead, are you? Dude, what? Why would I do that? I don't know. It just seems like every time I bring crickets over, they die for some reason. Can you believe that? That's crazy. I would never do that. Well, I'm glad you'll be sticking around. Hey, you know, I think we can be really good friends. God damn it, every fucking time. Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today we're going to be talking about feeder crickets. More specifically, I'm going to be giving you guys six tips that will help your crickets live longer. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Number six, keep them hydrated. In my experience, the quickest way to lose your crickets is to not provide enough water for them. Um, that being said, there are a few ways that you can provide that water for them. Uh, the first thing you can do is just wetting uh, a napkin or a paper towel or something and then just placing it in there. Um, they will go to it and they will kind of just like suck the water um, <laughs> off it, I guess. Um, the only negative about this method is that they will poop all over the napkin and wet poop will quickly become a breeding ground for bacteria. So just be mindful of that. Um, another thing that you can do to provide hydration is to just give it to them through their foods. So something like fruits and vegetables, for example, um, will provide hydration for them if they do eat it. Um, the only negative with that is that uh, the food will start to go bad after a couple days. Um, so you will have to remove it and replace it with something fresh if they don't eat all of it or um, most of it. The way I do it, and obviously my personal favorite, is to just give them these um, commercial gels, I guess, that they sell um, at the pet store. Um, I'll put a picture of it, but basically it's these little gels that are made specifically for crickets. Um, they'll go right up to it and they'll start drinking it. Um, I've never had an issue with that method, so that's personally what I recommend. Um, whatever you do, don't provide them water through like little cups or any kind of actual water in the thing because Crickets are pretty damn stupid. Um, they will drown in it. I have had a cricket drown in an actual drop of water. Like his legs were not on the water. Most of his body was not even in the water, but he just stuck his head in the little bubble and drowned that way. Um, so yeah, so don't do that, but all the other methods are fine. Number five, remove the dead ones. This is also another really important one and also my least favorite one to do, um, just because I think crickets are kind of gross, so I don't like touching them, um, even though obviously you kind of have to and you get used to it. Um, but basically when a cricket dies, it begins to um, release ammonia. Ammonia is a poisonous gas, so as it releases that gas, if you let the bodies kind of just start to pile up, it'll just wipe out the rest of the crickets. So I typically check for you know dead crickets once at least once a day. Um, if I have times, so I'll check it in the morning and then I'll just check it in the evening. Um, but yeah, just remove them as soon as possible. If not, it's kind of like a chain reaction and it'll just start killing all of them. Um, and on top of that, the dead bodies, like <laughs> dead bodies, the dead crickets um, start to stink like really, really bad. So you can't really even ignore it like if you have dead crickets there. So just remove them as soon as possible. Number four, provide lots of space. Um, this is one that most people, I think, tend to overlook. Um, I know I did for a pretty long time. 
But basically, if you don't give them enough space, um, they will start to kind of compete for resources and just them being all crammed up together will lead um, to a lot of fighting, which if you've ever seen it, um, it's pretty brutal, like watching a cricket just kill another cricket. Um, but yeah, just give them lots of space and just take advantage of all the room you have. So if you give them, let's say like, you know, one square foot, like is whatever you're keeping them in, um, or one square cube, what is it, square? Um, no, it would be like one cubed. Yeah, it's like a cube foot, it's cube squared, whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about, but basically, <laughs> um just fill it out with as much um room as possible so if you have them on the floor just don't leave it at the floor but also provide different vertical opportunities so uh typically the reptile stores will give you cardboard if they don't have just use like paper towels or um like little toilet paper or paper towels um the cardboard um and just give them lots of room so that way you can really take advantage of of all the space, the more room they have, the less likely they are to fight, kill each other, and die. Number three, provide food. Um, this one is probably not as important for the cricket survival um, if you're only buying like let's say two or three days worth of crickets, but it is very important for your reptiles. Um, by themselves, crickets are not a very good um, source of nutrients, so if you provide, but if you provide them with um, you know, food and different nutrients through other methods, uh, the crickets will be full of nutrients and then in turn, when your reptile eats them, they'll also absorb the same nutrients. Um, you can provide these nutrients by feeding the crickets, um, like I mentioned earlier, fruits and vegetables, or you can just buy a prepared diet, which is what I do. Um, similar to the cubes, it's cheap, easy, convenient, and it gets the job done. Number two, get your crickets from a good source. Um, this one may sound like common sense, but I don't think it's something that a lot of people consider, especially if we're just talking about, you know, feeder insects and not the actual reptiles. Um, but basically my local reptile store closes at seven. I love those people. Um, I've never had an issue with my animals, my crickets from them. Um, however, they do close a little bit earlier. So if I'm, you know, working late or whatever, and I really need crickets um, as kind of you know, an emergency backup, I do go to, or I, I used to go to um, Petco or PetSmart, which is obviously not ideal for a few other reasons. But basically what I noticed was when I would get crickets from uh, those sources, a lot of the times they would just kind of be already half dead um, when I would get them. So the way to tell, or at least what I would see was they would, just not even be able to move. Like they would almost just crawl. Like they were technically moving, but they were just kind of crawling like zombies that had been like shot in the leg or something. My leg! Um, and then they wouldn't last more than like a day and a half, two days, like the entire colony. Um, so yeah, so I stopped going there. Even, you know, if it's an emergency, I would rather just, you know, wait, maybe just skip a meal or something. Um, instead of, you know, feeding my animals sick crickets because God knows what the hell that cricket could be carrying that could, that could be passed on to my collection. So just make sure that whatever, whoever you're buying from, um, the crickets are healthy to begin with before, before you uh, bring them home. Number one, banded crickets. Oh my God. Banded crickets are the absolute best. Um, most stores will sell you, um, uh, brown house crickets, which are the most common ones, um, at least here in South Florida. But if you can get your hands on banded crickets, trust me, do it. Um, they're much hardier, number one, which is obviously what this video is about. But on top of that, they're just not as loud. Um, and they are, um, they don't, they don't smell like absolute dog shit, um, which the brown house crickets absolutely do. Um, so yeah, they're just far superior in like every single way. The only, I guess, I cannot, maybe not every single way, the only thing is they don't get as large, but they still get pretty big. Um, you can definitely use it to feed whatever you are feeding with um, with the brown house crickets. So go ahead and, and try to find those. Uh, you will thank me later. That's all for today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to hit the like button. I would really appreciate it. It helps the channel more than you guys know. Um, if you guys have any tips that you'd like to share with everyone, or if you have any questions, 
please make sure to leave them down in the comment section below. Um, also, I know I've been kind of MIA lately, um, and I do apologize. I don't have any good excuse. I've honestly just been really busy. Um, but I will make it up to you guys, I promise. Um, I'm going to make sure I drop at least three more videos before um, the year is over. I have my boy uh, <laughs> Will Exotic holding me to that, and now I have all of you guys that can hold me to that. I promise I will get at least three more out before the year is over. Um, so if you don't want to miss out on any of that, make sure to hit that subscribe button um, so you don't miss out on any of it. That was really repetitive, but I'm not redoing this. Um, but anyways, guys, that's going to be all for today. As always, thanks for watching and enjoy your reptiles.